Okay, I think it's running. So I'm gonna do the most ridiculous thing I've done in a while. I needed to get out of the house, so I'm taking a walk uh, just kind of through the neighborhood and wanted to do a quick, it's just been on my mind. So I'm gonna do a quick investment update. Uh, just talk about what's going on in the markets. If that is not your thing, I totally get it if you don't want to tune into this one. And I also understand that you're going to thinking, where, where is he going and why is he walking and why is the sound quality terrible? Yes, I have my phone on a selfie stick. It's real life, right? So anyway, I'm just happy to be out when we the weather's getting better. And with all this social distancing, I don't see as many people. So that's less fun, but uh, we're still on the phones, we're still on video, and we're still doing things like this, so bear with me. Anyway, I wanted to give you just a quick update as to what we see going on in the markets. And it, the summary goes something like this. At first, markets were panicked, and then the markets got optimistic because we saw lots of stimulus from the government, and we saw lots of data around the spread of COVID-19 and the data was starting to show signs of improvement. And so I think the market was saying, hey, maybe we'll get through this thing sooner and there's gonna be a bunch of money thrown into the economy. This can all work out, right? Uh, okay, this can all work out, but we've also sort of ignored certain parts of the data uh, for the market. and. Now we can't avoid it much longer. We're into earnings season and we're starting to see that companies, it's early, it's, it's very early, but companies are reporting their earnings and they are, they're not good. So <laughs> that's, that's a very technical term, right? Not good earnings. But this is what I think is gonna happen and I wanna give you a sense of how we're trying to navigate this process. Because I've had some people that have reached out and said, hey, should we just raise a bunch of cash? Uh, or should we um, change things or should we go buy bonds or something like that? And the, the answer is this it depends on your risk. Uh, what, what's your, what's your pro propensity to take risk? So your circumstance and your need. And if you're changing your risk because you're scared, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. If you're changing your risk because your circumstances have changed, then you okay, we can discuss that. But that's one of the things as a professional advisor I have to remind folks of is it's still a long-term deal. Investing takes time. And this this kind of stuff, even though it's we don't have a good playbook for it, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. Uh, it's why we're diversified. It's why we do some of the tactical management that we do. And and so this is, let me lay out real quickly. The, the earnings are coming out pretty bad. We're anticipating an economic contraction. At some point, the economy will be reopened, okay? It, it may get staged out. It may be with caveats of certain industries and certain behaviors and so, but there will be economic impact. And here's the funny term for it. Uh, it's not my term, but I'm going to borrow it. A term called pin action. The idea that the economy is not pockets, right? It's all connected together. And so if one thing gets affected, it, it connects to something else that gets affected, that connects to something else that gets affected. So we have these second order and third order effects when something goes wrong. And that's my bigger concern is, you know, the markets fell really fast. They actually hit a low March 23rd. Here we are April 15th, and they've rallied about 25% from their lows. Now keep in mind the flaw in the math on that, right? If you lose 10% of $100, you have $90. If you make 10% back, you have $99. You didn't get back to where you started, right? You have to make more back than you lost. So if you lose 25%, you need to make 33 to get back. If you lose 35%, you gotta make like 50% to get back, or maybe more. I didn't do the math. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it on the fly here. But the idea is there's some ground to be made up. There's definitely lost ground. And I think the market has gotten ahead of itself on this 25% run. Initially, people thought this could get really bad or this could be really catastrophic. We've been doing some analysis, just looking at 
earnings studies in anticipation of uh, pullback in earnings and what we think the, the fair market value will be. And as best we could tell, the markets are overvalued right now. But there's an old expression, right? Markets can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent. What we're trying to do is not stop being investors. Our strategy is still long term. That means we need to be in the market to participate as an investor. We did raise some cash. On March 9th, we did a cash raise for our equity holders. So if you own stocks uh, and you had stock models, uh, if you've been working with us for a while, you know what we're talking about, then we, we sold some of the stock to, to play defense. We have bought some back later. And so we got improved pricing on some things. Now what we're trying to do is we expect that at least until data becomes more clear, I don't think we're going back to where we were before. And I'll just be very clear about that. I don't see a pathway back to the highs before this market until we have clarity in the economy. And we're not getting clarity right now. Uh, I think it's fair to say that there's some good scientific data out there, and then there's a lot of garbage out there. And there's also... Uh, a, a lot of politics. There's, it's an election year, and I'm not I'm not picking a team right now. It's just acknowledging that we're going to get a mixed bag of information, and both sides of the aisle are going to try to use that to their advantage, and that means it's tough to sometimes separate good data from bad data. So this lack of clarity, I think, will be reflected in the markets, and what I expect is probably a trading range. And that means it's not a great year to be profitable, but we may have already, we may have seen most of the damage on the downside for now until, uh, you know, we get the government coming out and saying, we got to lock this thing down until September or until the end of the year. Okay, that, that'd be ugly. Like, I think the markets would really not handle that well. But for now, the markets are still saying, okay, let's take this in stride. Here's the data we're working with and we'll just treat it as such. So we're gonna navigate this the way we have been navigating. You've probably seen more trading lately. Uh, what's really going on is we're changing position sizing. So we're trying not to eliminate holdings. What we're trying to do is, it, in periods when we've seen a little bit of a run in a holding, we may trim that position and rebalance, take that position and then buy something else that's in a different trough, we're trying to look for uh, areas where we think opportunity will manifest. Um, if government dollars are gonna be thrown in a particular sector and we think that they're gonna be rescued, those are the types of considerations. Uh, the good news is we don't expect you to think a lot about this or care a lot about this. We just figure that's what you've asked us to do, but I wanted to give you an update. So our investment committee is meeting still regularly, several times a week. Uh, we, it's literally real time for us. We're watching this all the time. We have active monitoring of uh, pricing and events. So it's probably more work than we've had to do in a long time. But I've always said it's, it was really easy for years, right? All you had to do was get in the boat and just head downstream with the current. Uh, we're in a white water right now. It's not easy. It takes work. So we're willing to put in the work for you. We're happy to do it. We're grateful that you've put your trust in us. I will say this, and this is the good news about all of this, is we were built for this. Uh, we have always been financially conservative the way we've managed the firm's assets and resources. So uh, everybody's still employed. Everybody, you know, we've, we've got adequate reserves for payroll. We've got, uh, you know, the, the right tools to get the job done. So. Uh, hopefully that what I'm trying to say is that you can be confident that we're not going anywhere and we're taking the appropriate precautions to stay safe and healthy. So yeah, that's the update, right? Uh, I don't think this is going to be easy, but I don't think that uh, it's the end of the world. Uh, down the road, we're going to have other problems, right? But they're far enough down the road, we're not going to worry about those now. The, the debt that we're creating is going to have its own unintended consequences. But for now, let's just let's just handle one challenge at a time. And the challenge for now is to just remain calm, rational, and recognize that the market is gonna make a switch now from just looking at the virus to starting to look at the economic data too, in our opinion. And as it does that, uh, I believe that 
it's it's not going to like the data that it's digesting for a little while. So just don't be surprised if we continue to experience volatility. Uh, I tell you this so that you see it coming. I don't think it. I don't think there's anything that you need to do or change right now. Uh, and if I did, I would be contacting you on a case by case basis if your circumstances warranted it. But uh, for all the group, look, thanks for indulging me on the afternoon walk. As you can see, it's a, a beautiful day out here in the countryside. This is just kind of literally the backyard. That's really bright sunshine there. And then we've got sort of the river behind me. And after a snowmageddon a year ago, they cleared it all out. But uh, anyway, that's the story. I got nothing better to add for now. Uh, I just really appreciate you guys. Thank you for your continued trust and confidence. And please don't hesitate to reach out. And the, the really wild one is uh, we've had a few people that ha I would just want to say thank you. We've had some people that have referred folks in that have been uh, very nervous or they've, they've not had the communication from their financial professional. And, uh, you know, it means the world to us that you think of, of us that way. And, uh, whatever we can do to make your experience better, we want to do that. But there is no greater compliment. So uh, thank you. You guys know who you are if you're watching this. And um, for the rest of you, we just appreciate that you continue to put your faith and trust in us. Uh, we take our role as stewards very seriously. Uh, and so, yeah. Anyway, uh, I know it's just me this time. So uh, next time we'll try to get Wes back on here as well. But uh, until then, thanks everybody. This is David Littlejohn. Catch you later. Oh, my God.